the Amazon sellers are not bang on when they're thinking about their demographic. In fact, probably a lot of them don't understand the avatar or their um, their audience. And I found that um, that creating the avatar, understanding who's listening or, or who you're you're marketing to, helps out a lot. Hey everyone, this is Norm Ferrar, aka The Beard Guy here, and welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the e-commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. Today, we're going to be discussing one of my favorite things, using AI to enhance your Amazon strategy. We're also going to be talking about how AI can help build a better picture of your category, building a product for your audience and not an audience for your product, and how does a solid strategy trickle down into action with AI. Welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the e-commerce Amazon podcast. Now, Kelsey's not here today, so I'm going to entertain you while I find the music. Da, 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 da. Here we go, I think. All right, we are back and lots of things going on. Uh, we talked about an event that's coming up this week in San Diego uh, with the Titan Network. Uh, if you're going to be going, I know that there was a lot of interest during the 500th episode. Uh, I think there was 20 people that uh, got some tickets uh, that are going to be uh, going and, and make sure when we're there, you come over, we got to talk. Uh, we'd love to get to know everybody that's uh, that maybe, you know, we've never met. I know a lot of people in the comments section, we've had, uh, we've had some great conversations when we've had these meetups and maybe a cigar or two. Uh, so if uh, you are at the Titan network, can't wait to see you uh, in San Diego, you can still get tickets. Um, you can go to their website. Uh, just go to the, uh, the Titan network and you'll see the event or you can check out our resource page and you can get tickets from there. And I think there's a discount. I'm not exactly sure Kelsey's not here, so he can't put the, he can't put the man. I, you know what? I figured out that Kelsey ha, has a tough job. He's got to type the stuff into the comment section, which I can't do while I'm talking, but anyways, just follow me, go with me, make me sound like I'm doing Kelsey's job today so I can prove to him that it's not such a hard job and maybe I can lower his pay a little bit. Okay. The other thing I think I'm not a hundred percent sure but uh, Kelsey should be very close to becoming a micro influencer, which is a big day. I have five or 10,000 followers. I think we're getting really close to that and <clears throat> over 60,000 likes. So uh, that's on our TikTok cha channel, LWN Deals. Now, um, I, I was planning to, uh, you know, do a Kelsey you know, handle and talk back and forth, you know, puppet, you know, whatever that's called, but I'll spare the details. Uh, all I can tell you right now is that there's lots going on. There's lots of events. We'll fill you in. You can also join our group, uh, face our Facebook group. That's F what is it called? The lunch with Norm Amazon, uh, the, no, let's try that again. Lunch with Norm, the e-commerce and Amazon FBA collective, not part of the group check it out. And now, because Kels isn't here to keep me on track, uh, why don't we just throw questions and comments in the comments section? I'll try to monitor that as we go and sit back, relax, and welcome our guest. And, oh, you know what? I forgot to, I, oh my gosh, it threw me off. I forgot our guest and this is so important, her 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 bio. So let's start out this all over, I guess. Our guest is uh, the founder and CEO of Amazing Wave. She has been part of the digital marketing, uh, of, of the digital market and e-commerce space for a decade. I don't believe that. Wow. And she's worked with more than 50 brands in her uh, over her e-commerce uh, career, helping grow uh, sales across the D to C and Amazon marketplace. So we're going to welcome Joanne and I'm going to get this right. You know, Lamba Jiva, Lamba Jiva. Did I get it, Joanne? I hope I did. We practiced like for five minutes. All right. Now let's just have a word from our sponsor. I've got to find where the heck Kelsey put the sponsors. 
Let's see if I can find one. First one I can find, I'll do. Uh, where are we? Where are we? Sponsors, sponsors, sponsors. Hold on tight. I'm going to go in the fetal position. I know we're here somewhere. There's hundreds and hundreds of videos. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I'm going to pick this one. I think. Have Show. you got as far as you can using automated tools to manage your advertising, but know that there's so much more you could be doing? Maybe you don't know where to start or how to improve your Amazon advertising. Why not talk to Clear Ads, an Amazon certified partner with over five years of experience in moving beyond automation campaigns to sophisticated and proven advertising approaches that are far more effective for larger scale Amazon sellers. Clear Ads prides itself on being an extension of your business, providing insights into how to achieve results and ensures that you are able to understand the approaches taken and how they work for your business. Talk to Clear Ads today and let them know you heard about them on the Lunch with Norm podcast and get a free audit and see how Clear Ads can work with you to build your business today. All right. You may have noticed, you know, uh, Clear, and you know what? I love George over at Clear Ads. So I have no problem. Um, doing that sponsor, but I couldn't find us. I couldn't find the sponsors for you know our most recent sponsors. So George, I love you, uh, and that's a free plug for Clear Ads, and they're awesome, by the way. All right, now let's see if I do this right. Today is going to be a giant blooper roll, okay? Because literally, if you're just tuning in, Kelsey's not here to do all this production side. And um, I'm pretty much in the fetal position, but I can't wait to get our guest on. So questions, comments, throw them over in the comments section. Sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee. I'm doing that right now. As I enter, I'm multitasking. I'm an old guy and this is technology and I'm scared. <laughs> Welcome. Norm. Hello, Norm. <laughs> Lambajiva. It very, very good. Though you did get the first name wrong. Um, Joe. it's well, you so you kept on calling me Joanne. Who is this Joanne? Did I say this, Joanne? Yeah, this is not my name. As the song. Oh my god, I'm concentrating so much on your, <laughs> your last surname. Name. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I might as well just call you Bob. Yeah, I mean Bob. Bob is also good, but Joe is equally easy. So just stick to Joe. Yeah, you can't Joanne get is like something that probably my parents would call me when I done something bad. So it gets me terribly scared. I like, can't believe it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, we're off to a great start. We got lots of people uh, watching us today. Yeah. We're going to be talking about AI and Amazon listings, and we'll probably go down a bunch of other rabbit holes. But I just want to mention that uh, again. Like I mentioned so many episodes, why it's so important to go to events. Uh, and that's, yeah, I met you in Austin. I remember mm -hmm. that. Yeah, uh, I think it was Amy that uh, and introduced, I think it was Amy that introduced us. Well, this is the funny story. So actually, I knew about you, Norm, from my good friend Tom at M AMZ Elite. So I know I that guy. To, you know this guy. You've been into his taxi. <laughs> And um, so basically, Tom got really excited about me going to the uh, BDSS event. And he was like, right, whatever you do, you have to go and say hello to Norm Ferrar. He's just one of the best guys. And I was like, OK, I have a mission now. So I never met you. And I was wondering how to introduce myself without seeing like a, a, a total fangirl. So I approached Amy, who I also did on you in a bar. And I was like, Amy, do you know Norm? And she was she was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me introduce you. I was like, Phew, cool. And then I still appeared like a total fangirl. But anyway, that's how we met. <laughs> it was great. Oh, yeah. And we've met since there a few other times. But uh, OK, you know what? And that's the whole point. We got to know each other. We're friends now. And, um, you know, I can reach out, you can reach out and it's just part of the network. If, if I'm struggling with something or you're struggling with something, it's, it's awesome just to be able to go up, talk. And also, uh, one of my favorite things is food. So breaking bread with somebody and just, uh, getting to know the person outside of Amazon. So I just wanted to mention that because it is so important. Okay. Now let's talk about AI. 
Let's do. <laughs> There's so much out there. It's just, it's, it's like Cabbage Patch dolls. You know, everybody's talking about it back in the day. Do you know what a Cabbage Patch doll is? You're too young. No, no, I have, I have, I yeah. have that knowledge. I'm not that young, no. I'm oh, like oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so let's talk about pet rocks then. So everybody had a pet rock, right? But now it's like this AI thing. Um, everybody's talking about it. Do they really understand it? And that's what I want to bring out in today's podcast. So do you think Amazon sellers really understand, um, first of all, um, their category or niche, and how can they improve it using AI? Mm. Well, I think there is there is plenty of sellers who have been in the space for long enough um, that are constantly going to events. And I think going to events is one of the great ways to, to learn about different techniques. Um, but I think there is actually a really big portion of sellers who are uh, maybe just dipping their toes, they're starting or they have already started um, selling on Amazon and maybe they're not see seeing that their sales are going in the right way, they're not breaking into the category. And most of these sellers normally um, start off on Amazon through kind of like this, this fad, I would say, influencer um uh, how can I say all of these YouTube videos which say, all right, uh, here's eight minutes and you're going to find this one product that is going to make you one million dollars. Now watch it. And then someone shows them how um, they will type in some search terms. They will pick maybe a few products. Then they will order them on Alibaba and then they're going to sit on the beach. And I feel that um, a lot of these people are being missold um, essentially what actually selling on Amazon is and how difficult it is to find a good product. And then once you find a good product, how to actually launch it and succeed. And so this is where I think there is a lot more work to be done by sellers in terms of really uh, understanding their category, understanding their competition, and understanding their audience before you at all even get to Alibaba. And this is not even just for starting off sellers. This is also for current sellers who are getting stuck with, you know, growing their sales, or maybe they're seeing that a lot more new competition is coming to the market. So I think that's kind of the first thing. And then AI can absolutely help with that. Okay. How easy is it to go and start working with AI? Well, it it's surprisingly, it's it's not easy, but it, it uh, is fairly intuitive. You just need to, I think um, one of the things that you need to bear in mind is structure. And so when it comes to using AI, it's about practice and structure. It's about like starting to think about how you actually input your prompts, what data you actually input into whatever system you're using, and then what you actually outputting. And so it's not easy in the sense of getting really good output, it takes practice, but starting off and just dipping your toes and experimenting, you can do it today. And I really encourage everyone to, to start doing it today. Okay, so kind of sticking on the, the, the same topic, category, niche, uh, how can AI really help build a better picture around that category? Sure. Well, um, so currently Amazon sellers are quite lucky because there is so much wealth of data they can use. So we have great tools like EM10, Jungle Scout, like Google Trends, any, any sort of um, even TikTok, Facebook data, there's so much that you can use in terms of data input to actually inform your strategy. The problem with a lot of the tools though, is that they give you quite, um, how can I say, quite fragmented and granular data. They never show you, um, for example, okay, so what, like if we, if we take an example for a client that I'm currently working with, they're working in the dinnerware and silverware categories. And these categories have a lot of wealth of keywords. Customers go and search for these, um, uh, these products in many different ways. And so you have variety in terms of style, dinnerware, how many pieces, what kind of material. Um, so many, like, and also dinnerware can be called many different ways to actually get to the same product. 
And the problem is that you don't actually know what is the type of product that customers search the most for. You can look at specific keywords, but you don't have one tool that says, okay, actually people mostly search for ceramic or stone dinnerware at 12 piece, um, 12 piece dinnerware sets. And, and so you basically are, are stuck with either dealing with this data manually or like you basically working at a piecemeal. What AI can do is essentially help you analyze this data and create actually clusters, which then help you understand the bigger picture. And so I use a lot of like, for example, ChatGPT um, advanced analytics to input a lot of different sources of data like Helium 10, Jungle Scout, your own Amazon um, seller um, data and then create one single picture of your entire category, which then helps you, okay, how should I launch this product? What is my audience? What are my comp competition? How do customers actually search for these products in on Amazon? Like what is it that they are searching for? So I know this is kind of down a different rabbit hole, but mm -hmm. uh, to help enhance your listing, you can use a, I know I've done this um, by just getting it to understand your audience better. So a lot of the times Amazon sellers are not bang on when they're thinking about their demographic. In fact, probably a lot of them don't understand the avatar or their, um, their audience. And I found that, um, uh, that creating the avatar, understanding who's listening or, or who you're, you're marketing to helps out a lot. Have you been doing any of that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think this is probably one of the most important first steps when it comes to selling on Amazon is actually understanding who you're selling it to. And again, AI like gives us so much power now. So let's just take um, a seller that has been selling for a little bit um, on Amazon. You can actually use the um, Amazon audience data just as like a very simple um, sort of basis. But then what you can do also is essentially um pull a lot of reviews from your like positive negative reviews from your own listings and competitors and then combine this in ai and get it to build your own customer profile so actually understand who they are their pain points what they value what they don't like about your products your competitors products and then you essentially have one customer avatar, which then you can actually use to build your product listing, your titles, even your images. And I take it a one step further. I almost create like a little um, AI chatbot so I can almost converse with the customer and that way build a, a richer perspective of, okay, so who are you? What, what do you want to be sold? And what do you actually buy? Because that's, that's an, a question that Custom uh, that sellers don't not necessarily always ask. They think about the product, but they don't always go back to the customer and understand their sort of like deep psychology about why they buy something and what problem does this product solve. So, does that make sense? Yeah. And uh, another thing, I was just thinking out loud here, but if you put that data in, and let's say you're selling soap, I've never done this. I'm going to do this. I'll probably do this today. But try to figure out from your competitors um, what would be the next best product to bring out with it. So there is product opportunity. I mean, you can go in there and check it out. But, you know, can, you know, one of these uh, chatbots or not chatbots, uh, one of these LLMs, you know, work with you and come up with you, you input your competitors data. And then maybe it'll spit out, oh, you should be bringing out a soap dish or liquid soap. Or do you think that would work? Yeah, absolutely. I think, again, it, it's about the quality and the wealth of data that you provide. But I think um, that's why, for example, I work a lot with ChatGPT Pro and Claude 2. I think when you combine two different um, uh, AIs and then essentially test them, okay, so what kind of ideas you can give me for that customer, what um, other problems can we solve, or like, if they have, if they are lo in love with this product, um, what other products can we, would they value to be cross-sold, up-sold, then the AI can give you so many ideas, and then you can start actually 
then the really cool thing is when you start combining different AI. So for example, um, using ChatGPT and MidJourney to actually, um, for example, map out several ideas from just a, an idea point of view and then actually create them visually in mid-journey. And that's when really the magic happens and you can start actually building the, the customer avatar, but then also like a whole map of, of a product portfolio that you can offer to them. Uh, just a note, I don't know if you signed up for this, but you know how you have ChatGPT Plus, uh, but also Claude has uh, come up with their version of ChatGPT yeah. Plus now, which is great. I, I actually love Claude. Um, you know, it's just, what. by the way, uh, if you want to get it, it, when you're talking about all these big LLM, um, you know, di the different versions of them, they all come up with something slightly different. And mm -hmm. if you want to check this out, it summarizes everything. There's a there's an um, uh, a Chrome extension that you can use, but there's also something I'm loving. I just when I do my regular searches now, um, I use Web Chat GPT, and it summarizes the four um, just off to the side. Uh, so it's nice if you want to see what um, Chat uh, GPT is doing, Claude, Bing, Bard, and you can just click through each one. It's uh, it's just really handy and uh, it's valuable and it's free. So free, that's, you know, with an F. Um, I don't mind that. Yeah, so, that's really cool. Yeah. Are, are there any tools or plugins or extensions that you're using right now to help you with your Amazon journey? Yeah, I mean, I one one tool that I would definitely recommend is um, for for sellers specifically in the Amazon space is eContent because I think oh, yeah. they they they're currently doing probably the most tailored job in terms of creating images um, specifically for Amazon sellers using AI. Um, of course, you can do that also by combining, let's say, Midjourney with Adobe. But I think e-content are just doing it specifically for the sort of the e-commerce community, which is cool. In terms of um, in terms of tools, I actually like to keep it clean. I like to use ChatGPT and Claude and actually create pretty extensive um, prompt databases and work with that. And obviously integrate uh, ChatGPT in Google Sheets to actually do create different formulas. I guess the only sort of additional two tools that I actually use are um, HeyGen sometimes for my own content to like yep. actually, yeah, so that's really cool. Um, the next one is called, hold on, I always get it right, TDLV. No, I got it wrong. Basically, it's a really cool little um, conference call tool which um, basically records your video session with like, let's say this session. Yep. And then it gives you an AI summary of all of the points that you have discussed. And you basically just copy paste this after a client call. And it gives you like a perfect um, summary of everything that has been agreed. So that's really, really nice. Um, and I have, um, I have actually experimented a little bit with Dante AI as well. I think, you know, what I mentioned about creating little chatbots, I think that's actually quite a good way to, to start playing around with that and, and, yeah, getting this interactivity, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah, very good. Uh, there's so many tools out there. But, you know, when I started out with Amazon and, and uh, you know, I, was, I came through that ASM model and uh, went through that and, there was nobody, there was no PPC, there was no consulting, there was no Helium 10 at the time. Mm. And all of a sudden things started to explode. And I fell into this trap. The, we called it the shiny object syndrome, right? Where you were always just looking at the latest and greatest thing that came out, taking your eye off the prize. And one thing I learned very quickly, because it hit me, like no other, not, no other industry that I was in ever got involved with that I was losing time and money by chasing all these new hacks or new apps that basically overlapped or marketing tools that at the end of the day, my old school marketing outperformed. Yeah. And, you know, they're not sexy. You know, what I was doing was not sexy, but I ended up just telling everybody in the company, look, we got to stop 
going out and buying this for $27 being upsold to 97, then being upsold to the 270 or 97 or 497 price, you know, and it happened all the time. You know, you know, you got suckered every time you got in there and then, you know, then all the others. So we just cut it back. Um, I just saw something about data dive in here. So, you know, the helium tens, the data dives, uh, you know, we subscribe to, and we were using, and there was a few other, but I, the reason I'm saying this and why I'm so long winded on this is that I think we're falling in, could fall into the same trap with AI. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely agree. So I guess just to go back, I think for Amazon sellers, obviously there is the usual must. I, I was just more kind of talking about new AI tools. I mean, obviously Helium 10, Jago Scout and Data Dive are, are must. And I think Data Dive is specifically doing quite a lot in terms of integrating AI into their portfolio, which is really, really cool. Yeah. Um, but in terms of just new, just I would say like AI tools for general use, I mean, I'm running a, a, a weekly e-commerce um, AI newsletter. And so I go through tons and tons of new tools every week to understand, okay, is there something, there is always something new coming out. And my prediction is that probably at least 70% of the tools that come out now are not going to survive because there's just like, it's, it's, Kind of becoming a little bit of a bubble everybody in the space is doing some sort of ai tool but the reality is that you, you see it already happening the bigger players are rolling in some of these functionalities within their own portfolio and so it's just a matter of time for like you know microsoft open ai all of these guys meta to actually include all of these small little cute little ai tools into their portfolio and kill them and so I always think wait for the dust to settle a little bit and then start investing. Even something like I was reading about Jasper AI yesterday and that, you know, they were kind of at the forefront yeah. of um, the industry when it came to like writing content using AI. But um, I think last week they basically announced that they're going to be cutting their um, share, um, sort of like share price because they are, um, they are expecting that they're not necessarily going to grow that much because already they are, they've built their whole system on open AI. And the reality is that you can already use pretty well um, ChatGPT to produce the same type of output. And so it's the same thing, like what is generally original idea versus what is a nice little trick that is going to go off in the next few months, especially how quickly AI is moving. You know, it's interesting that you said Jasper. So I used Jasper quite a bit um, back. I say back in the day, like a month ago. No, <laughs> like uh, last year. And you really weren't thinking about, oh, it was using OpenAI um, to craft the uh, responses. But what was the benefit of Jasper at the time was they were the perfectly crafted prompts. And if you don't do that, even yeah. today, if you don't do it, it's better. But if you don't do it properly, you'll just get garbage. And it'll look fantastic for the for people who are doing their Amazon listings. Or let's say you're going over to Zonguru. <laughs> okay, Zonguru is a great platform. We had John on just the other day. And, <laughs> excuse me, he was the first that I knew of that was doing this. And there could have been others. But if you put, even into his platform, if you put garbage in, you get garbage out, even with helium 10. So take mm -hmm. a look at helium 10 when you're doing Cebral. So you're, you're doing, you want to get all this information. Just a quick example. If you go and you, you have these stinky bully sticks. Okay. Cause they're stinky and there's odorless and there's six inch and there's 12 inch. There's knotted, there's all sorts, but your competitors all show. And if you don't put in a similar competitor, you're not going to get the proper data back. Yeah. And that's the same thing with, with uh, the prompting. If you don't do it properly, you'll have a problem. And one, one company that's been an underdog, but these guys are incredibly brilliant guys. They're from MIT. Um, I've had, um, I don't know if it was uh, one of the co-founders on, uh, but uh, I, anyways, Bill King came on from Phrase, F-R-A-S-E dot I-O. Jasper, it was like beta and VHS. Jasper took it over and phrase kind of went off to the side. 
I love phrase. And the reason why I do, you can type in a, a keyword. It comes up with a mind map like answer the public, but it shows the number one um, question and article and how to beat it. And they've got all these insights that is not expensive either. So it's, it's something that uh, uh, I think even with everything else that's out there, it makes my job easier. If I want to summarize something, get six summaries, send it over to a writer, they pop it into chat GPT if they want. Uh, and then they summarize it, send it over to the editor and send it out. By the way, I don't know if you'll agree with this or not, but I never just copy something from chat GPT without reviewing. Oh God, no. I mean, like, firstly, I'm fairly sure that, okay, maybe not right now, but in three months, everybody's going to be able to very easily detect what is a, just a purely AI generated content and it will be a total turn off. And I never, never, never use just like, you know, one prompt uh, sort of um, write me this and then copy paste because a, like you are, it sounds incredibly generic, especially if you don't have a good prompt. Secondly, you always have to add your tone of voice. And even when you train it on your tone of voice, it still is not good enough to be like completely your tone of voice. And actually, funnily enough, with Claude, I have noticed that he also does typos and grammar mistakes. So, you know yeah. what? That's a good thing. Yeah, well, yeah, yes, yes, but I, I was talking to Kevin Kevin King about this. I said, you know what? It's gonna be those emails that have the typos and yeah. little errors that will look human. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> well not professional, so. but look human. Yeah, to be fair, like uh last week I was rereading my newsletter that I sent and genuine typo, I had like oh I had like one word that was completely wrong and I was like, how did I miss it? Um, so this is, this is added value guys. Like, you know, it was actually meant to happen like that so that it's certainly human and not chat GPT generated. We're, we're on the same, same wavelength. Okay. So I'm going to try to do this correctly. We are at the bottom of the hour. This time is flying. Um, uh, at, if you're new, we've got lots of listeners here and I'm not sure how many new ones. It looks like there's a lot of new ones, but uh, we, at the end of every podcast at the top of the hour, we always give something called the wheel of Kelsey. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it today uh, because I can't figure out how Kelsey did this. I've been looking, you know, trying to figure out how he does it. But what I want you to do is put in hashtag wheel of Kelsey tag two people, you get a second entry. And on Friday, we'll do a double wheel. And then I'll let you know, uh, Joe, on who wins it. So what is our giveaway today? All right. The giveaway is an AI consultation hour with me. Um, it's specifically designed for um, Amazon and e-commerce sellers um, who are perhaps not necessarily sure how to implement AI into their processes or that are starting, but maybe need a little bit of guidance. So we'll go through their existing processes and how to best start with AI. Very good. Also, uh, it's, it's funny because at the BDSS, we were talking about this new, really great way to roll out information. And that was newsletters. Nice. Now it sounds like it's coming out more and more and more and more. You know, uh, every time I turn on something, I hear about newsletters but you came out with a really great newsletter. Do you have a sign-up page where people can get a taste of your newsletter? Yes. Um, so actually, firstly, shout out to Kevin King because he was the inspiration for me starting this newsletter. Um, so the newsletter is AI for e-commerce and Amazon sellers. It's a weekly newsletter every Tuesday that um, specifically sifts through all of the AI news out there just to like narrow down on what's relevant for AI sellers, uh, e-commerce sellers. So the link is ai-ecommerce.beehive.com. But the easiest way to get to it is just head to my LinkedIn profile. There is a link there or to my website, amazingwave.digital. And there is a link to that. So yes. I I've even got a better solution. Yes. Let's get Kelsey to do his job. And on Friday, okay, it'll be perfect. <laughs> All 
All right. So now if I'm doing my job, I'm going to go to a commercial. And I hope this is not from like 2019. <laughs> Let's try this out. Are you struggling to keep up with your Amazon business? Do you need help from a skilled, reliable virtual assistant? Well, look no further than the Virtual Assistant Academy, or VAA Philippines. Founded by successful Amazon sellers who know the challenges of hiring quality VAs, VAA specializes in locating, screening, training, and supporting high-quality VAs in the Philippines. Their VAs receive extensive Amazon training and ongoing professional development and are committed to a long-term working relationship with you. Partner with VAA and experience the peace of mind knowing that you have a dedicated Amazon-trained VA who's up-to-date with the latest tools and trends in the dynamic Amazon marketplace. Head over to VAAPhilippines.com and let VAA match you with your ideal VA today. Okay. Now, just a, a reminder, any comments, any questions, throw them over in the comment section. I'll be monitoring them and we'll be answering any of the questions towards the top of the hour. Now let's talk about building a product for your audience and not mm -hmm. an audience for your product. Yeah, I think, um, you know, what we sort of, what we really need to focus as sellers is essentially... You know, till now, I think till like maybe about three years ago, launching a product on Amazon was maybe a little bit less of a, of a hassle because there was much more space. The Amazon aggregators hadn't like completely came into the space. And, and so it, there was probably much more of a straightforward job to actually launch a product without necessarily making it super tailored, without necessarily kind of tapping into this sort of customer avatars that we talk about. But now I think in 2023, launching a product has to be a very tailored job, specifically talking to an audience. And you can absolutely use AI in order to actually inform like who you're talking to and how your product is essentially talking to them. And so rather than I'm going to come up with a product and then I'm going to find an audience that's going to buy it. Let's start with the audience. And as I mentioned before, I think this is where, you know, you're going to do a very good job at taking whatever audience data you already have or an audience that you think you want to tap in and getting under their skin. And so just as I said, I think using, for example, um, data from uh Amazon, um, using data, demographic data, using review data, using, for example, any sort of Facebook, TikTok data that you can combine, combining it and then using the AI to analyze it and create this customer avatar is super pivotal because then you can start actually breaking it down and you can start thinking about, okay, what is their lifestyle? Where do they shop? Um, well, what, like, are they the end receivers or are they the, the, the buyers or are they the end receivers, right? And, you know, the, the question about where they buy can also dictate a strategy that is not purely just Amazon. You, your, your customer goes on Amazon and buys something, but they have many, many different touch points. And you have to go back into almost like a um, classic media strategy, which is, you need to think about where your audience is like are they consuming still newspapers are they on social media are they like uh, browsing ads in a magazine right and then actually tailor your strategy how to sell your product to that audience so ai is a really great tool to help you understand these people understand the tone of voice that you have to take on and then everything else trickles down from there uh, you know, while you were talking and doing kind of three things at once, you know, uh, and I, I can't believe I'm doing that. Uh, but anyways, I, uh, I checked out um, a, a couple of really great prompts. Mm -hmm. And one uh, is to help build your avatar. And this is from a friend of mine. Uh, he's the president of digital marketing and uh, di digital marketer. And this is Mark DeGrasse. And he's got a great prompt there. 
And there's other prompts that you can check out uh, on his website uh, on customer research, on building an avatar. I've uh, I've used this avatar and it works, or this prompt, it works great. The other thing I, I want to bring out, and I don't know if you know Scott Cunningham, but Scott's awesome. He was on the 500th podcast and uh, he's from Merchant Mastery. I think it's merchantmastery.io. And if you type in to ChatGPT, uh, do you know Scott Cunningham? It'll say yes. And mm -hmm. then do you know Scott's um, TBIF? And this is his, his, you know, his hook, like everything he does, it's always about the hook and the TBIF. And you just say that you want five options or 10 options. And while you're writing or creating your bullets or doing anything, it's really telling you what you can say in all of your social media, um, into uh, ads, into blog articles, uh, even into your uh, Amazon A plus pages. It's all about these, you know, four things plus the hook. Um, that's just another way that you can add it to your, uh, even your store. Anything to do uh, with trying to get more conversions, Amazon posts, all. Everything that we're doing is M, uh, Scott Cunningham's TBIF. And um, yeah. just, just you know, to, to mention that, I don't know if you know, Scott, but if you don't, just put it in the chat GPT. <laughs> oh, well, but this is, this is a great point. This is the thing, like, you can, you just need, actually, you, you really just need a little bit of imagination to actually make your prompt super super interesting and elaborate and get a really good output so okay you can one part of the prompt let's say i'm just thinking out loud but one part of the prompt let's say is about building a customer avatar but then you can actually say you are this person now like build me a customer avatar based on their knowledge like let's say our favorite um alex Ramosi or anyone anyone else who is very much in the space you can essentially input all of this background information about uh, let's say an actual marketing expert yep. and then ask them to build your prof this this customer profile or anything else or you can sometimes i use um specific marketing books and i would start prompting uh, prompting chat gpt do you know this book do you know this book do you know this book so i kind of prepare the 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 scene and then once i prepare the scene with this all this background knowledge from these books then i say okay what about you do like you give me like sort of like a, a marketing strategy based on this or like a paid social strategy based on this and so you just you 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 can use ChatGPT for endless amounts of inspiration, and then use that to further perfect your content, your customer profile, etc. Yeah, it's I do that quite a bit. If I'm writing funnels, I'll go to you know different different people who do funnels, email campaigns. You know, Adrian Savage. I mean, there's so many things you can do, and that's really priming the pipe. You know, you're just, you, you get it where, all right. And it's so, you know, it can be so easy. I know that we've done these um, email sequences and we've told it to act like, uh, I always start off with, have you heard? Mm. And so, you know, it'll say, and I, and I specifically say just yes or no. <laughs> and then yes. And then I'll start to build out the prompt. And once it's done, it, it usually doesn't take, too much information as long as you put in the right information what you want the e emails to achieve um, then it writes it out I, i've seen it i've seen really really well written uh email sequences in first round you know yeah. a lot of times you have to go back and and revise it but it's been great now let's talk about this a bit more so how does a um a, a solid strategy uh, trick trickle down. So if you've got a really great strategy for AI or your product, how does that trickle down to um, action? Uh, how I know what I want to say. I just know how to say it. How does it trickle down in terms of like actionable elements of how to of AI? Talk? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. I got you, Norm. Yeah, you. Yeah, you're good. I, I got you. Um, 
<laughs> and that's well, what chat GPT says all the time too, by the way, are you yeah. really Joe or are you chat GPT? Well, you know, you might have to ponder on that. <laughs> hey, come on. I'm far too personable to be a robot <laughs> yet. Um, so I think, I think this is the thing like, um, AI can really help you in sort of any facet that your strategy uncovers. Let's, let's go back to the, the, the customer avatar example. So, okay, you have built your customer avatar. Let's say this is like three different audiences. So from there, what, what can you use this data for? Like, what can you use this inside? Sometimes people are like, okay, well, what, this is nice, but how does it help me? Well, it really helps you then to feed your chat GPT, for example, and build yourself a very solid copy. And of course, like this is sort of the most obvious thing. I think if you are an Amazon seller in 2023 and you're still not using an AI to help you do some of the um, legwork in terms of um, optimizing your listings, then you absolutely should start today because yesterday was the time, but today is really the next best. So this is a must. Um, so you can essentially then feed it um, this customer profile, their pains, their uh, desires, their problems, and then ChatGPT is then going to create a copy that answers these pain points, these benefits that the customer is searching for. Then um, from, okay, so like let's cover, this is your product listing from a written point of view. But did you know that, for example, you can use ChatGPT now, you can actually feed it images and you can ask it to analyze these images and then provide you with an output. And so, for example, Today, um, I just did a, a little experiment, which is I fed it um, 20 different images um, from one category and I asked it, okay, can you give me um, like basically the recommend recommended themes for hero images within this category? And it just gave me like a list of 15 different types of images that I should probably include within my, um, within my listing. So you can, you can just use your imagination about how much analysis you can do in order to understand your category and how to optimize like your entire product listing based on that data. And then further to that, you can feed it, feed that information to a tool like e-content or mid journey or uh, Photoshop to then like essentially create the images. Then we go into advertising. And so here again, you can do so many things like how you create your campaigns, how you sort out your keywords, just so much. There, there is. Now, when you were talking about those images, uh, was that uh, feeding it through data analyzer? Yeah. So yeah. this is, yeah, this is such a, this is probably one of my favorite parts of um, ChatGPT. If you have not tried this, if you're, if you have ChatGPT, I don't know if this is available yet for the free version, but if you have Plus, do yourself a favor. Go to settings, go into their their beta, uh, I think it's under beta feature, features, or mm -hmm. uh, no, it's under features, and then click on it, and you're going to see um, now, you're going to see browse in Bing. That's turned back on. And you're going to see uh, something that used to be called beta interpreter and now it's called data analyzer oh my gosh it truly is a game changer what it can do you know if for spreadsheets analyzing spreadsheets asking questions doing exactly what you said uh there's so much and our our buddy that was on here um last uh, on friday um saj uh, he has um oh what's it called uh leak skills I think it's called, I'll, I'll get that. It's, I know it's in our Facebook group, but anytime something new comes out, he's on it. He, mm -hmm. like, I, I think he's a mind reader. Like he knows what's going to happen before it even comes out. And he's been one of these guys I've been following forever and uh, he's awesome. So he's got a really great uh, a video on code interpreter on what, you would never even imagine you could do with it. So uh, anyways, I, yeah, I was just curious if that was it or not. Okay. Last thing, last question before we get to a few of these questions here. Um, sellers, 
what are some mistakes that they're making right now and how can they improve on it? Okay. Well, I would say first mistake is they are not using any AI to like optimize. So I think, um, I think from every seller that I've spoken with, they feel that they needs to be a, some sort of perfect moment when they will finally wrap their head around, um, AI and that's when they're going to start using it and the reality is that that moment is is not going to come you basically go to chat gpt log in pay the 20 dollars, and start playing around with it and you're going to very quickly start getting an idea about how you can use it and start getting a feeling about the prompting so mistake number one not using ai to help yourself mistake number two is not necessarily thinking macro enough for your category and your competition. So I would say if you are if you are selling on Amazon and you are getting stuck and something is not growing how you expect to grow, like firstly break it down a little bit about in terms of metrics and then start asking the question uh, questions from a bigger point of view. Is it, is it my customer that I'm not attracting? Is it their more competition? And start kind of like looking at um, the bigger picture and then start narrowing it down to the smaller picture. And then you will get actually where you need to make changes. So um, I think, and then there's also just, um, just in general, not necessarily thinking about where Amazon is going to go in the next, I would say five months. Mm -hmm. which is very AI focused. Like actually in yesterday's edition of the newsletter, I wrote about um, Project Nile, which is Amazon's um, AI rejig of their entire retail experience on Amazon. And what they're going to do is they're going to actually include a, an alternative way for customers to search for products using AI, which will be far more conversational and far more like research based. And then the essentially the algorithm is going to give you recommendations based on this conversation and sort of other metrics. And so if you're not really thinking about using AI and then also how can you optimize your listing so that in the future, when somebody's looking for what is the best coffee machine using capsules? And you haven't optimized it from that point of view to give you that like deep content, then you will be missing out on sales. Okay, got it. Uh, could you go into the private chat and type in your newsletter and I'll uh, put it in here. Now sure. we're gonna go over, we've got a few comments and questions. So let me see. Uh, Mike, okay, Mike Bryan, um, have you tried Data Dive's uh, briefing function? No, I haven't yet, um, but I will definitely put it on my list. Yeah, yeah, he, Brandon's coming out. You know he's gonna, you know, be pretty aggressive with this. So it'll be interesting. I think he was on and he was talking, you know, how aggressive they're gonna be over at Data Dive mm -hmm. to, to be leaders, and that's his goal. You know, always to be on top. Okay, now let's see. Next, this is a question. Are there any tools to help build a specific demographic of the customer avatar on the data side? And Angela, um, I put a link in there to um, Mark DeGrasse, and that's the perfect avatar. Like You can go in there, you can add it. It'll ask you questions. Um, the other thing is prior to all this chat GPT, uh, I learned... Uh, really, uh, Scott Cunningham is a speaker uh, and a, he's part of the faculty over at Digital Marketer. And I have a Digital Marketer subscription. I went in there and he did a full, uh, I think, I think, I don't know how long it was, but he goes through everything that you need. But you can just go in and say, do you know Scott Cunningham? Do you know, you know, uh, uh, his formula for a successful avatar and start working there as well. So Scott's formula um, and Mark's formula are very simple, but that's how I would start it. Anything on that? I would say you can actually even reverse, uh, reverse the process using ChatGPT. You can actually like um, start thinking about your product or like a poor product and ask ChatGPT to 
to um, give you maybe like five different audiences who might be the audience for this product mm. and see whether you can go from there. And so if you don't have any data points, but you probably would be able to get some data points, but if you don't have any data points, this is also a way where you can actually just go the other way around and start building from there the picture. Very good. Okay, next. Rad. Okay. We tried reviews for our product, but the result is different from our, our, our product. For us, AI is an alien invasion. I think that's prompting, isn't it? Um, yeah, I think, uh, well, you, you do need to get a little bit of your head around prompting, but I don't understand what is, we tried AI reviews for our product. What do you mean? I think you try uh, exporting AI reviews. Ah, okay. Well, I think Helium 10 is an actually like the Chrome extension is a great way to like pull some Amazon reviews. And you basically, this is a, a hack that I learned from Tom. Um, you just basically pull each um, star review. So like one star, you pull two star reviews, you pull, and then you get like actually a lot of reviews. And based off that, use that database to feed it into the AI. Extra tip. Don't use ChatGPT, use Claude because Claude has a far big, bigger token limit versus ChatGPT. And so it can process much more data. And then you can get it to summarize your reviews and then feed it into ChatGPT for a slightly different output. Okay, very good. Last question from Marsha. And by the way, Marsha, I saw you. I don't know if you saw me, but uh, I was on Clubhouse with uh, Colin Campbell, and uh, I know he mentioned you. Also, um, just on a quick note, uh, Colin's book came out, and I told everybody on this podcast that it was the best book I've read about entrepreneurship ever. And uh, Colin was on the 500th. I was talking to him about it. He asked me, uh, you know, does anything suck? And I say, no, it doesn't suck. I tell you, if anything sucked, it's great. It's 500 pages, four or 500 pages. I got an advanced copy. I went through it all and I came on here and I predicted that it would be a bestseller. Well, guess what? It came out yesterday. So start, scale, rinse, repeat. Um, came out yesterday. It's number eight in Canada and it's number three on Amazon as of yesterday. I'm telling everybody that if you don't get a copy of this, you're missing out on something. He's got 20 years or 20 different interviews. It took him 10 years to write this. And Colin's no joke. He's lost a hundred million here. He's gained a hundred million there. He just goes through his entrepreneurial cycle. So yeah, is this a plug? Yeah, am I making anything off of it? Absolutely not. But I guarantee that if you take a look at this, you'll you'll gain something. So it's on Amazon right now. Uh, start scale, uh, rinse, repeat, and it's by Colin Campbell. He's a good friend of mine, and I wouldn't be this passionate about it. Wouldn't tell you guys about it if I didn't get behind it. I am behind it because it's an awesome book. So just like your newsletter, Joanne. <laughs> Or Thanks. Joanne. I did it again. Joanne. No. Stop it. It's Joe. It's really simple. Or Bob. Bob also works. Bob, Bob is good. Okay. How can I say that? Okay. So anyways, Marsha. Okay. Let's see what you have here. Joe, I have a highly regulated uh, EPA controlled pesticide product, which has had a lot and a lot. I know Marsha has had lots of problems staying listed. I've been afraid to use chat a uh, chat. GPT to build out listings, what would you suggest? Okay, so I think here it's kind of two-step process. The first thing is you can use ChatGPT to build out the listings, but the first step is you have you are you are the sort of the master knowledge uh, holder. So you would know what ChatGPT should and shouldn't do. And so you can already pre-feed that into the prompt. Second thing is actually you can feed all of the um, sort of the specific prohibited um, elements that Amazon says that can be used already into your prompt. And so you can already create a prompt in such a way that you say 
to the to the AI what it cannot include, and therefore it basically comes up with a much more tailored problem. But uh, but at the end of the day, you always have to check. But I think if you feed already what shouldn't be said or what should it should stay for like far away from, it can already tailor that. That that is the perfect answer. Yeah, Thank tell it tell it what it can't be. Um, mm. uh, one other small thing that we've done to help us with at least Amazon, but you can do this with any regulatory body, anything, uh, is we just took the terms of uh, the guidelines, pumped mm -hmm. it up, and now we have you know something that ChatGPT knows the guidelines of Amazon, so we can just run something by it, and is this you know is this kosher? And it can so, tell us yes or no. Absolutely. And just one more thing. The cool thing about the pro version of ChatGPT is that it has uh, this bit called custom instructions. Mm -hmm. And so you can actually, custom instructions is almost like a layer that sits on top of your entire ChatGPT. And you can say, hey, ChatGPT, for every chat that I have with you or for every prompt, this is already the pre um existing information that you have to abide by and so every time you write a new prompt this will be kind of on the back end and the ai will know this information so if you want you can actually pre-feed it this like any sort of things you do or don't mm -hmm. want to happen and already build with that your prompt yeah I, it's it's great but I have a problem with that, the custom instructions, because of my 28 different personalities. So it only, you know, it won't work for me. Take a favor, one more. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. So that's it. We're at the end. This was awesome. I'm going to have you back. But before I do, how do people get a hold of you? All right. So I am really active on LinkedIn. So I post pretty much every day on LinkedIn all about AI and e-commerce. So you can follow me there. Or you can get in touch with me. My website is called amazingwave.digital. And there you can actually email me at joe at amazingwave.digital. Or uh, you can read the awesome newsletter, which I sweat about every week to like read about 50 different sources to get the best ones. Um, yeah, this is it. <laughs> Perfect. So uh, that was Bob at... Thanks. You're <laughs> definitely going to ruin that. <laughs> Thanks. <Noah. laughs> okay. So this is your last chance to enter the Wheel of Kelsey where Joanne's going to... Uh, jo We're going to have a conversation about that. <laughs> After the call. <laughs> Joe, 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 Joe. You know what? When we meet, if I call you Joanne, slap me in the head. I, uh, I don't know why I'm doing it. But okay, I'm just going to say that I'm old and I didn't take my meds. That's yeah, all I'm going to say today. But <laughs> Joe is going to be giving a consultation, which is going to be awesome. If you've just listened to what she had to say today, she knows her stuff. So it's it really is a priceless consult. So uh, anyway, if you are interested, uh, hashtag Wheel of Kelsey, tag two people, and that'll give you a second entry. But there is a catch. It'll be on Friday because I have no no clue how to do this. So uh, uh, Kelsey's going to come back and he will do the drawing. We'll have two drawings on Friday and then we'll make sure that Joe gets your information. So you get about 30 seconds and then we'll cut off. And now let's go look at this. Go to a word from our sponsor. Which one shall I pick? Where is There we go. Launching products isn't like it used to be. To successfully launch your product, you need to hit that algorithm from all sides. Driving external sales, boosting social signals, and increasing product listing engagement are fundamental to success. Rebate is the first and only launch platform that delivers across this broad range. Get your product featured on Amazon.Live through Rebate's Influencer Program. With this service, your product gets instant exposure to large audiences of shoppers and permanent placement on Amazon Influencer Storefront, which drives perpetual sales. Run a sweepstakes campaign on Rebate and connect with shoppers off Amazon. And lastly, drive external sales with tried and true deals campaigns. Visit Rebate.com today 
and get started with your 14 day free trial. There we go. It's, well done, it's that time. Now I'm just going to, oh my gosh, there's hundreds of different clips here. I don't know how he keeps track. Now I just want to make sure as we go that I do this properly. I want to make sure I got the intro there. We're all set. Okay, Joanne, I'm going to. <laughs> oh, amazing, Nora. It's literally written on the screen. It's Joe. It's okay. It's okay. Joe. Yes. I'm going to remove you from the screen cool. and I'll put you backstage and I'll come back afterwards and we can talk about how many times I said, Joanne, this, you know, this. You can episode. make it a drinking game, just like the one where you say, anyways, like, anyways. Yes. yes well, right. I only said, I think I've said, anyways less than joanne yeah i think this time you have improved on the eat anyways but not on joanne so next time <laughs> all right that's it i'm gonna run uh let's see that's the end of the podcast so i'm gonna remove you i'm gonna put you backstage and i'm gonna end this thanks all right Norm. thanks, thanks joe Okay, everybody. So yeah, that was an interesting podcast. Uh, you know, between uh, tell as, uh, saying Joe uh, Joe's name as Joanne about fifty times and not learning, and also just trying to figure out the whole video thing in the background. So uh, Kelsey, you get bonus points because I can't figure this out. Thank you for joining us today, and join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I don't think I'll be around Monday, but I will be around on Friday. But we do have a pre-record, so it's uh, it'll be a really good episode as well. So join us on Friday. We've got a great show uh, on on uh, this Friday coming up. Uh, I'll be in San Diego. We'll be doing it live from the hotel. Also, uh, if you want to be part of a really great community, our community is awesome. If you don't know where to go to be part of it, it's our Facebook group. That's the Lunch with Norm. Uh, e-commerce and Amazon FBA uh, collective. Uh, we've got great engagement there. And all I should also mention, uh, we've got a really super newsletter that we've been building out and we've been talking to Kevin and he's been helping um, build out this newsletter that it's, it's a newsletter that doesn't suck. And it's getting better every week. We're adding more and more to it. So if you haven't gone, uh, got our newsletter yet, you can always just go over to any of our sites, which is Lunch with Norm or normferrar.com, and you can just join it there. Okay, that's it. I'm out of here. I think I'm going to do this right. I hope I do this right. We'll see you later. Want more great information? Don't forget to subscribe by clicking here. Also, if you want to check out our latest podcast, click over here. Lunch with the, lunch with the, lunch with the.